and for the opportunity we've had to worship you this morning, and we thank you for the beautiful day that you've given us, and um, for the opportunity to be here. The, the world is a crazy place, and there are people in it who can't come together and worship you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity that we have. And Lord, I pray for uh, Pat and the loss of his mom that you comfort him and his family. And I uh, just pray that you continue to be with our church and encourage us as we seek to follow you and to make you known. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, when we were on our elder retreat uh, a couple of weeks ago, we came up with our uh, theme for the year, which is on the front of the bulletin. Anybody have a bulletin? Yeah. You all have bulletins, right? What's the theme? Walking in the right path. You sure it's not New Life Bible Church? <laughs> You're right, it's Walking in the Right Path, and it's based on Psalm 23.3, and I've preached uh, about that last week. Um, preached from Psalm 23, and we talked about uh, what God expects from us, and what God is offering us as his sheep, as our shepherd. This morning, I wanted to talk about the right path is the old path. Now, um, as, I wa as we talked about on our elder retreat, I walk along the, the shore of uh, Lake Geneva. Geneva. Geneva Lake. It's not Lake Geneva, that's the town. It's Geneva Lake. And um, I walk the, the, the old Indian path uh, that, that surrounds the lake. And... As you walk along that path, and you see all of these beautiful houses and architecture and, and the beautiful lake and the scenery. Um, but as you walk along the path, there are places where there are old paths that are no longer used. And I took a picture of some of those, and I emailed it to us, but we didn't, we didn't get it uh, because the computer was acting funny this morning. Um, but there are old paths that are not used anymore. Um, and it, it made me think of this verse in Jeremiah 6.16. Let me read it for you. It says, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. Uh, the last part there, we will not walk in it, that was the answer of the Jews to God as he, as he offered this to them. But... Um, uh, in the church today and in the world today, there is a push to leave the old paths. And I have a, a, a sign that I'd like to show you. Um, never place a period where God has placed a comma. That's Gracie Allen uh, from before my time. And it says, God is still speaking. And the idea there is that the morality that God has encoded in the scriptures uh, is not set. That God's morality changes through time. And so the things that were wrong before are not wrong now. That we should embrace the changes of the, the cultural uh, uh, whims of our societies of what is right and wrong. And that those are, there, are, there are churches who believe that and and uh, uh, promote that in, in our society. But the world is, has a desire for us to lead the old paths. And there's, this is a quote, and I am not endorsing any candidate, but I'm quoting Hillary Clinton. Listen to what Hillary Clinton says. She says about uh, uh, the different moral stands that she takes personally, and declares as those that are just and right. <laughs> Rights have to exist in practice, not just on paper. Laws have to be backed up with resources and political rule. Deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. So in the world that Hillary Clinton wants to, to create, there's no room in that world for us who disagree with the moral convictions. So, what is the old path this morning? Well, let's look at that. Uh, the right path God wants us to follow is the old path. Now we saw that in that verse. What is the old path? Um, 
The old path starts in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verse 3. God has just uh, given the law through Moses. The law is the old, the, the old Testament, the old command, which was sacrifices. You know how they, the, the Jews offered sacrifices and, and they had to wash things and they had to wash their hands and uh, if, if a fly landed on a dish, you couldn't use it anymore. And the law was just this huge body of rules that the Jews had to follow in order to come to God, in order to uh, move toward God. And let me read this in verse 6, 3 through 9. The law was not about rules, however. Listen, listen to what it says. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, talking about the law, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. And he talks about how that's supposed to be a part of their daily lives. But if you'll notice, the point of that passage is not about the rules. It's about the heart. God wanted the Jews to follow them with their whole heart. Follow him with their whole heart. Next, the right, so that's the original part of the path that we're talking about. One of the original parts of the path is through the law, through worshiping God through the law. And then the law moved, the, the path moved, it progressed uh, to uh, Matthew 3, 1 through 4, 5 through 10. It says, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who spoke by the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. So you have, in the, in the uh, Old Testament, the Jews were required, in order to approach God, they were required to follow the law. They were required to do, do it through the law and the sacrifices. But then when John the Baptist came, it changed. The requirement was no longer that they go through the law. They had to do something else. They had to go through... Uh, doing this thing called what? Repentance. And repentance is what? Acknowledging that my way of thinking, my way of living, my beliefs is wrong. And that God's way of thinking, God's way of living, God's way of believing is the right way. So the Jews at that point had, had totally lost all... Uh, direction as far as what it meant to follow God. They had the Pharisees, and the Pharisees, it's all about the outside. You know, Jesus called them whitewashed sepulchers. They washed the outside of the cup, but the inside of the cup is filled with all kinds of filth and sin, and that's who they were. And so John the Baptist is calling the nation of Israel away from that external faith that they had, not faith, the, the external religion that they had, to internalizing it again in their hearts. And so in verse 5 it says, Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John the Baptist saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers! Is that the way to make friends and influence people? <laughs> Brood of vipers, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And see, that's, that's uh, John's message is, is not just repent, which is to say, uh, yeah, I feel bad about that, but I'm going to do it again. But repent and, and change. Our lives should change as a result of our relationship with God. So the, the, the path went from following the law to believing First, repenting and believing that the kingdom of God is, is coming. That was the next path, the way in which people were to approach God. Then, something amazing happened. We talk, John talked about it this morning. Something happened. What happened? Jesus mystery. died on the cross. The mystery. That, that God sent his only son. I was reading in uh, Matthew 28 today, I'm the scripture reading today, and, and how they said, uh, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. He called himself the Son of God. Let God come down and bring him off the cross. Then we'll believe in him. 
But the mystery is that God sent His Son Jesus to die for us. So now the path, which is uh, talked about in Acts chapter 16, 29, 31, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's the path today. That's the path that leads us to God. You know, that was what Paul, when he was in the Philippian jail, uh, we talked about this last week, how while he was, while Paul and Silas were in that jail, they had just been beaten, they were chained and, and, and in stocks and in horrible misery physically, and then they started singing. They started singing, and we talked about how even in the worst of time, times, God leads us by the still waters, and he restores our soul, even in the depths of the worst moments in our lives. And so, uh, when they started singing, then the earthquake happened, all the doors opened, and the jailer was going to kill himself. And so they yelled out, don't kill yourself. And then he came to them, he said, what shall I do to be saved? Was it, you must follow the law? Was it, you must repent and believe that the kingdom of God is coming? No, it, mu it was that you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that... That's reiterated by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 5 in the gospel. Paul tells the Corinthians what the gospel is, the good news that we proclaim. It says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. So the way we approach God has changed but the path to salvation has not. Salvation has not changed. And we're going to look at that in, in the next section here in part three, point number three. The right path has always been the same. That's why it's called the old path. Um, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 gives us the way of salvation. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Actually, that's the old King James. I'm not really sure what the new King James says. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So salvation is by grace through faith. The, the, the by grace... Uh, everyone who is saved is saved by grace. Amen. Grace is God's unearned and unmerited favor. Uh, who is the first person who was saved by grace that we know of in the scripture? Noah. Adam. Noah. Noah. The first one who is referred to as being saved by grace. Garrett's got the verse up there and you can see it. Yeah. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Everybody who was saved before Noah was saved by grace. But this is where we first hear about the grace of God, which is pretty, pretty early on, it's just six chapters into the Bible, that we hear that we are saved by grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Ephesians 2, 4 through 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So everybody who has ever been saved has been saved by grace. Grace is possible because Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. Grace is possible because of Jesus. Jesus' death on the cross is the, the, the central point of how God can offer grace. Grace is necessary because it is the only way the perfect and holy God who cannot look on sin can approach the sinner. Right? A lot of talk about sin there. Has anybody ever sinned? Anybody? Yep. Anybody? Right? The world wants to say wants to say there is no sin, and that's why there's a new way. That all the things we we're told in the Bible that are wrong are not wrong. Because God is still speaking. We have to change our belief system. But God says no. We need to go to the old ways. Do you think the Jews who had walked away from God, who were doing all of the sinful things that our society today wants us to do. They were doing all the things in, in the time of Jeremiah that, that people are doing today. 
You think that the God who called them to stop doing what they were doing and go back to the old way is still speaking so that it, oh, well, it was not right for them back then, but it is right for us today? No. It is still God calling us as Christians to follow the old path, the good way, and walk in it. Because He has not changed. Amen. He is still holy and perfect and demands holiness and perfection from us as, as human beings. And because we cannot achieve that, because Adam sinned and we're all sinners and uh, guilty and deserve punishment and spend eternity in hell, in the lake of fire, right? We all deserve that. Because we are sinful, the only way God can approach us is by grace, is by His grace. Now, you would think that it's got us who are approaching God. It's God approaching us because while we were yet sinners, it says, God, was, God is the one approaching us and He's approaching us by grace. So we are saved by grace. And then everyone who is saved from the lake of fire is saved by through faith. Saved through faith. So grace is kind of the, the doorway that allows us into the presence of God, into God's kingdom. Faith is the handle that opens the door. That by faith, through faith, we enter into God's forgiveness. Faith, here's faith, here's my definition of faith the faith that's being talked about here. Faith is trusting that the means of God's grace is sufficient to enable you to come to and please Him. You get that? It's the means of God's grace. It's believing, trusting that the means of God's grace is sufficient to enable you to come to please, come to and please Him. So, uh, when God said, follow the law, actually the law was an expression of God's grace. It was a means for God, for people to through faith, believe that by doing these things, I was going to be made right with God. Not because these things were enough to make me right, but because God accepts them. And then when the Jews who were uh, in Jesus' day, in John the Baptist's day, came and repented and believed that the kingdom of heaven was at, at hand, they weren't doing that because that was sufficient. They were doing it because they trusted that it was what God was going to use to, to embrace them and bring them into his, their, his presence, right? So it wasn't, it's not the, the, the particular path at the moment. It's, it's that you're believing that the path that he's given you is the one that will bring you into his presence. Not because it makes me worthy of that, but because he accepts it. Hebrews 11.6 describes this. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So, who, who has been saved by faith? Through faith by grace. Let's go back to Abel. This is all in Hebrews 4, right? or Hebrews 11, verse 4. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to the place where, which he would receive an inheritance, and he went out not know, knowing where he was going. By faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered Isaac. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons. Each of the sons of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones, that they would take him with them back to Israel. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son's, son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, he forsook Egypt. By faith, he kept the Passover. By faith... They passed through the Red Sea by the dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. These are all people in the Old Testament being saved by faith. By God's grace, through faith. Faith is necessary because there is nothing we can do that will make us right before a perfect and holy God. 
There's no thing you and I can do that will make us, that will open that door of grace to allow us to enter into God's kingdom. The only thing that God has placed there that allows us to enter into that door is faith. Believing in the means He has established for us to enter into His presence, which is by grace. So we all come to God by grace through faith because we cannot measure up to his perfect standards. So whether it was the path of Moses who had faith in God's grace to accept the sacrifice of the law, or the path of the Jews who had faith that they would receive forgiveness through repentance and belief in John the Baptist's message that God's kingdom was coming, or it is the path of the church age that by trusting in Christ's burial, death, burial, and resurrection for our forgiveness, we are all all of us are on the old path of being saved by grace through faith. Does that make sense? It all makes sense in my head. I hope it makes sense in your head. So, as we apply this to ourselves, you want to walk in the right path, right? I want to walk in the right path. There are a lot of voices telling us what that path is. But God is telling us that that path is the old path. The path that has saved people from the very beginning. The path of grace through faith. We need to stay committed to that old path. You know, uh, the, the election is coming, and uh, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what you're going to vote. Um, but regardless of who wins, I have no idea what our country is going to become. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And, but we know the progression where our country is going, where it, had, it has been going. And it is more and more to silence the old path, to force us to change our beliefs. And I think it's just going to continue to move forward in that direction. And when that, that pressure comes for us to change our ways, to change the path, give up the old path, embrace the new path of the ungodly. We need to stay firm to the old path of salvation by grace through faith, that it is our sins that are keeping us from God, and that it is God's grace that provides a way for us to enter back into His presence, and that through faith alone, we get to do that. And we need to be continuously working to share it with everyone we can. Amen. We need to stay faithful to the old path, and we need to continue to share the old path. We need to do whatever we can. We need to send those boxes to those children all over the world who don't know Jesus, who have never heard of Jesus Christ, that they can be saved by grace through faith. We need to continue to do the Awana program, the high school program, the junior high program. Uh, we're going to be, Lord willing, starting a second service in Richmond um, in December. Planning on starting that, uh, launching that. Uh, our Christmas Eve service is, is going to be in Richmond. Uh, Lord willing. That's the plan. And we want to reach Richmond for Christ. We're going to be sending out mailers and, and uh, going door to door, inviting people to the, to the church service. We cannot give up. Regardless of what happens on Tuesday, we cannot give up our purpose of declaring the salvation of God, the mystery of Christ, Staying faithful to the old way. Amen. Are, are we all in this together? Amen. Amen. Right? All right. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that, that you have given us uh, a way to reach you that has not changed, that will not change. Salvation will always be by grace through faith. And Lord, I, I know that many of us, as Randy said, are apprehensive about the election and what the results are going to be. Lord, we don't know who's going to win. We don't know what they're going to do once they do win. But regardless of what happens, Lord, we can trust in you. We can be faithful to you. We can continue to serve you. We can continue to be lights. Share the gospel, Lord. Help us to stay faithful in the face of hostility, the face of persecution. And help us to continue to share the gospel regardless of what the world would say about what we're doing. We thank you that we have salvation through Christ. And that one day we will be in heaven with you. Praise